and welcome once again to The Verdict. I'm Mick Cornett. Kent Myers has the week off. He should be back with us next week. In the meantime, today, uh, I think a very interesting show. We're going to have Ann Roberts, who's the executive director of the Oklahoma Institute for Child Advocacy with us, along with Howard Hendrick, who's the, uh, well, the director of the Human Services for the state of Oklahoma. We're going to be discussing child abuse through the years and the current status and uh, what it is we need to know about child abuse in the spring of 2007. Is it getting any better? Is it a problem we still need to be concerned with? Those issues and a lot more today on The Verdict. Everyday America uses clean burning natural gas instead of coal or oil is a day of victory for our environment. That's why Chesapeake chose to explore for natural gas exclusively, and we've never looked back. Because natural gas burns twice as clean as oil or coal, and reducing carbon emissions to combat potential global warming is every bit as urgent as cutting our dependence on energy imports. As America's number one driller of new gas wells, Chesapeake is moving fast to find untapped reserves of natural gas here at home. It's the right fuel for America's economy and the fuel for a clean air future. We just happen to be early to see it so clearly. Chesapeake, natural gas wins the day. Looks like somebody doesn't want you to know the facts about Cox Digital Telephone. Maybe it's because over one and a half million customers are saving big, and you can too. Plus, you'll save even more on all your Cox services when you bundle today. Oh, here's that new phone service I've been hearing about. So, while the phone company may not like competition, nice dog. you're gonna love nice it. Dog. There's a whole new world online, but it's not always safe for kids. That's why your parents and teachers set clear rules, when to go online and how to protect yourself on the internet. It's the safe way for kids, right gang? Right, be safe online. Thanks to Lauren Nelson and Cox, we're working to keep Oklahoma kids safer online. For your free guide, log on now. And if you feel your child has been placed in danger by someone online, notify law enforcement today. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett without Kent Myers this week. Kent has the week off. He'll be back next week. Our guests for this show are familiar faces. If you've been watching The Verdict, first on my left, Ann Roberts. She is the executive director of the Oklahoma Institute for Child Advocacy. She's held that position since 1989. Received both her undergraduate and graduate degrees from the University of Oklahoma. Has worked in the nonprofit sector for over 20 years. Named the National Child Advocate of the Year 2000. Uh, by Voices for America's Children. It's her fourth appearance on The Verdict, and welcome back. Thank you. And our other guest, Howard Hendrick. Howard was raised in, in Bethany, graduated summa cum laude from Southern Nazarene University, earning undergraduate degrees in accounting, passed his CPA exam, earned both an MBA and a law degree from the University of Oklahoma, practiced business, real estate, and tax law for 17 years, and then was selected as the Human Services Director. Your political career is not even in this bio, Howard. That's how impressive it is. You just toss aside those, those times as state senator. Uh, serves on the United Way of Greater Oklahoma City Advisory Board of Trustees. He's also on his fourth appearance of the verdict. Welcome back. It's great to be back with you. Ironically, in a sense, you've both been on the show four times, but neither time have you been together. And so this is a special treat for all of us. We're here to talk about... Um, well, issues involving children, and, uh, and you've been a, a frequent guest to uh, speak for the rights of children, and, and today we're talking about child abuse in general, and the connection between 
childhood abuse and problems later in life. Right. Sum it up for us. Well, child advocates have known for a long time that when children suffer traumatic uh, incidents in their childhood, they have a tendency to have emotional difficulties, learning difficulties later on. But somehow that hasn't been enough motivation to make the changes that we're looking for. So I was very pleased when we found a new study that actually uh, draws a link between childhood trauma and future adult health status and really emphasizes the need to invest in young children and families. Well, it, this seems to be more than just a child is abused, they grow up to be a, a, an abuser. Right, this, right. this seems to be, it seems to indicate that there's larger scale problems for the exactly. adult who is abused as a child. Exactly. Well, what they've done is, we all know, for instance, that uh, tobacco use can lead to heart disease or uh, COPD, lots of other things. But we've not really looked at why people smoke in the first place. And what they're looking at is childhood trauma might very well be the thing that causes children to become depressed or anxious, and they pick up that habit uh, of smoking, which then in turn turns into the, the disease. Howard, the ACE study, Adverse Childhood Experience. Tell us about the study. Well, Dr. Vincent Folletti, who uh, was an internist in San Diego at Kaiser Permitti, which is one of the largest healthcare delivery systems in the world. They have 52,000 lives in their system. Uh, he was transferred into kind of a research position to figure out why these high-end consumers are costing the system so much money. So he began to interview them, and as he began to interview them, a pattern began to develop in, in these interviews. Uh, they were reared in the home of an alcoholic. They were reared in the home of a parent who had chronic mental illnesses. Uh, they were sexually molested as children, or they had one of several, ten he identified, adverse childhood experiences. And uh, we said, man, this is really interesting. I've seen this in all these high-end cases. And he was at some national conference with some folks from the Centers for Disease Control. They said, he asked them, has anybody ever done any work on this? And they said, no, but you've got the best data in the world. Let's use your data. So they went back to San Diego and they did a study of about between 17 and 18,000 persons in the Kaiser Permanente system. These are people who are middle class folks in San Diego uh, in their 30s to 50s, very wide range of ages, and began to give them a free examination as part of participating in the study and then they would answer a series of questions and how that would give them a score. And they found that the A score was the best predictor of adult health status. This was a Centers for Disease uh, Control, Centers for Disease uh, study that found, made that finding. And uh, so what Kaiser Permanente did was change the way they delivered healthcare as a result of this study. Uh, before, if you came in and you had a heart, heart condition or you had some other malady, you'd get the diagnosis and they'd treat you for the malady. But now what they do is that you get a paper questionnaire, yes, no question. And as a result of this questionnaire, you also get an A score. And then if you have a high A score with this malady, then what they will try to do is give you some individualized counseling or whatever services you may need to actually deal with those circumstances so that uh, you don't really end up misbehaving, which is really what causes the poor health status that you may be smoking or drugging or drinking as a result of these childhood experiences. Well, those are the things that are killing you and making you sick. But if you don't deal with the underlying reason for why, those, why you're doing those behaviors, then uh, you're going to continue those behaviors and those are things that are going to make you sick and even die early. Anne's primarily, her, her primary role is to look out for children. You've got a much wider mm -hmm. range of issues as a DHS director. Mm -hmm. uh, how is the results of the ACE study helping you and your job and, and the people that work for you? Well, for us, it's really important because we can see in a much broader, long-term view of, of what are the effects of these behaviors. And it just continues to go back to saying that you know, family status is very important, family health is very important, and the more things we can do to create healthier families for our state, you know, in the long run, it's not only, it's going to be a health question. What type of questions are asked in this? I mean, what 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 type of questions are, are giving the, the most interesting results? Uh, the type of questions in the ACE study, you mean? Yes. What, what are the ACE prevalences? Well, you just begin to identify the ACE circumstances. You know, uh, do we do you, were you, do you have drug abuse or alcohol abuse or those other things? Were you reared in a home of alcoholic? Those are the things that really generate the score. If you have a score of four or higher and you have uh, these other conditions, then you probably need some underlying counseling services to deal with that or you're going to have health, health challenges. One of the things that they looked at was very interesting to me, Mick, because as a child advocate, I'm usually concerned about what's happening to the child 
And so they did ask those questions about abuse and neglect, the things that happened to the child. But they also asked five additional questions about what happens around the child, just within the family, which certainly helps us understand that we need to concentrate on the entire family unit mm -hmm. and make it sure that they are whole mm -hmm. and not just the child. So whereas most of your resources and attention previously has been to treat the child yes. and to, to learn about the child, yeah. now you're seeing that if, if you cannot provide some level of education for adults, right. if you can't understand the adults in the home, it really makes it much more difficult to try and treat the children. You bet. You bet. A, a family is a child's ecosystem. And that ecosystem is significantly influencing what happens to that child's health in later life. Mm -hmm. So creating as nurturing of an environment as possible, giving all the limitations that we have, those are the things that are really gonna make a difference for a child. So the, uh, the ACE study, the Adverse Childhood Experience, if you uh, interview adults and you get their ACE score, mm -hmm. is that a predictor of how competent a parent they might be? No, no, not necessarily. It's just a, it's just a best predictor in that study of their health status. Mm -hmm. In other words, they are more likely to have health problems themselves as a result of, unless they've had the treatments underneath it, which is really mm -hmm. the cool thing about the study. I mean, the hopeful thing about the study is that, that uh, you know, you can actually get services that will treat the underlying circumstances so that you don't have these uh, poor health status. That also says something about what kind of services we can provide to kids earlier. If we can get those mm -hmm. services to kids earlier, then maybe they won't have the poor outcomes that were present in the ACE study. A great example that Dr. Felitti gives us when he came here just a few weeks ago, he started this whole thing because he was doing a weight reduction program at Kaiser Permanente. And these are folks who were uh, morbidly obese, several hundred pounds overweight. And come to find out that some of the people that were most successful in losing the most weight would drop out of the program. And he thought, well, now that's odd. And that was the genesis for this entire thing, was some follow-up interviews, exit interviews, if you will, to figure out why they started gaining the weight back after they'd been so successful. And it's exactly as Howard said, with these underlying emotional issues, they were eating because they had been sexually abused or some other very difficult trauma that happened to them. And they were covering their pain, coping with their pain. And so as a child advocate, that's helping us determine um, not just to uh, help people change their behaviors because it's a good thing to do, like a, a public awareness campaign that says, well, you should buckle your seat belts and quit smoking, but really get underneath that and figure out what is it that is causing this child mm -hmm. to take up this behavior. Let me jump in and get us to a break. Ann Roberts, Howard Hendricks, we're discussing uh, child advocacy and Department of Human Services and the results of a new study. You're watching The Verdict. We'll be right back. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. Shining is taking responsibility. At Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Oklahoma, we know managing your health care can be overwhelming, and it's our job to help you meet the challenge. By guiding, supporting, and showing the way, we encourage you to gain control. Because we believe the best tool we can give you is the confidence to take charge. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Oklahoma, shining through. Okiwani is an Indian name for a place where children play. When we obtained the camp, we found a lot of oil debris left in the woods. We saw a commercial about how the oil and natural gas industry cleans up old oil well sites. We called the OERB and they agreed to remove tons of concrete and steel didn't cost us a thing. Thousands of children have left their footprints on this land. Thanks to the oil and gas industry, they will for a long time to come. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality assistance and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23 child. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. There's a whole new world online, but it's not always safe for kids. 
Never give your name, phone, address, or password to anyone you met online, and always keep your personal information private. It's the safe way for kids. Right, gang? Right. Be safe online. Thanks to Lauren Nelson and Cox, we're working to keep Oklahoma kids safer online. For your free guide, log on now. And if you feel your child has been placed in danger by someone online, notify law enforcement today. Oh, hi. I know you guys said I'd save with Cox Digital Telephone. Well, my bill came and... Could this be right? You may be surprised how much you save with Cox Digital Telephone. That's why over a million and a half people have switched. So this really is a total. Lovely. Because I think I found a good use for the savings. With Cox, there's no waiting for the other shoe to drop. The only surprise is there's no surprise at all. Welcome back to The Verdict. Ann Roberts, Howard Hendricks here with me. Kent Myers has the week off. He'll be back with us next week. Uh, Howard, what's the trend as far as child abuse reporting in the state of Oklahoma? Is, is it uh, getting any better or, or can you tell? Pretty flat, slightly up, not, not material, uh, one or two percent increase per year in terms of the number of reports. Confirmation rates are sli actually slightly down, but still flat essentially for the last several years. Really. You've been very interested through the years in why child abuse mm -hmm. takes place. It's mm -hmm. not enough, it appears to me mm -hmm. from, from an administrator standpoint that you want to treat the children. Certainly you want to right. help the kids in that situation, right. but you want to know why and you right. want to you right. slow it down if not right. stop it. How, are you making headway in that direction? I think so. Uh, the overwhelming majority of child abuse and neglect is neglect. And so dealing with the neglect primarily comes from drugs. There's not anything new about that. Uh, people get off and into their habits and as a result they neglect their kids and their kids are wandering around an apartment complex, you know, uh, for a day or two while their parents are, are you know, in inebriated or whatever. So dealing with those root problems, well, why are their parents doing that? Well, I think maybe this study is kind of in insightful. Uh, maybe their parents are dealing with a lot of their own adverse childhood experiences and. And so if we can get those parents some help and rehabilitate them in some way, uh, many of those are capable of taking care of their kids later. And what's your take on the trend? Where, where are we in Oklahoma? Are we, are we doing better or are we, are we not doing as well as we should be? Well, our Kids Count book has just been published and I'm pleased to say that uh, we've been doing this for about 10 years, now a little over 10 years, and the trends are changing just slightly as Howard said. Um, Oklahomans care deeply about their kids and about other people's children as well. And so we are paying attention and directing our resources where that is supposed to be. The interesting thing about the ACE study, I think, that's going to help us determine where our resources need to go is the fact that for years we seem to study things in a silo. We'll study child abuse and its effect on kids. We'll study drug abuse and its effect on kids. And the ACE study puts it all together. Hmm. In other words, we, we know that things are seldom hunky-dory in a home that has domestic violence, for instance, or drug abuse. And so they, these, these risk factors really happen in clusters. And so I think the A study is going to help us really understand the full burden that a child carries with them into adulthood. Mm -hmm. Well, Howard, when, when your workers go into a home where child abuse is suspected, are they asking similar questions that the A study has, has, is they're, asking here? They're primarily incident-related questions. In other words, uh, can, can they document whether or not an, an event that meets the definition of abuse or neglect under the statute are present. Or not. They're not really getting off necessarily. Now, once the child is, if the child is determined that that event occurred and that it meets the criteria and some court determines the child should come into our custody, then as part of the treatment protocol, then you begin to ask some of these, the environmental questions mm -hmm. that go around. Uh, what other things do, can we do to see this doesn't happen again? How is the business of dealing with child abuse changing? You've, you've been in this position now for several years. What, what evolution have you seen? Well, the, I think one of the great things is we're continuing to get children to permanency and adopting, uh, continue very high record statuses. Actually, we had another record year last year. Over the last five years, the number of children receiving subsidized adoptions is up 58%. So we've continued to... So this is a level beyond foster care? This, this is after foster care. Mm -hmm. They've been adopted by someone and we were able to su support a family who's agreed to adopt a child who may have some special needs or whatever. Those numbers are continuing to grow. So 
Every year we're adopting out of a little over a thousand children every year now for the last seven or eight years, which is a very good trend. And what do you see as a, a, an evolving trend and as an advocate for children? Uh, you know, how has it changed since you first started in this role and to oh. where it is today in 2007? Well, when I first started back in the dark ages, um, there were very few people that would come out to the Capitol to talk about kids. And I did feel like the lone voice crying in the wilderness sometimes. Because you're fighting for funding. Is that what you're, is that what you're well, trying to say? Well, um, for law changes, uh, okay. things like, you know, we've talked on this program before about getting uh, PE reinstated in schools and getting junk food out of schools. So some of them are law changes. This year's children's agenda really is concentrating on funding and resources for the programs mm -hmm. that we have gotten into place but haven't had enough resources, mm -hmm. like being able to fully fund child welfare, fully fund all the subsidies that Howard is talking mm -hmm. about that provide resources for young families. Mm -hmm. How, how can we help kids in Oklahoma? If you were, just, if you were going to give us uh, you know, 30 seconds on yeah. the, the best thing that, that, that people can do watching the show, what, what can they do for the children of Oklahoma? Well, I'd have to break it down into their, their role in life. Because, Take more than 30 if you need to. Oh, okay. Um, well, just as a, as a human being, just uh, forgetting that I'm a lobbyist and a director, uh, as a human being sitting on my porch, seeing the kids around me every day, I have lots of kids in my life, and some of them are doing just fine, some of them are not. And so what I like to do is find the friends of those kids who are doing well and make sure and bring them in too. And just offer uh, to be a mentor, to be, a, you know, to pull a baby into the lap and read to them and do all those kinds of things that we as, as human beings want to do for each other. Uh, but I think as, you know, lots of times it's easy to get isolated and to assume because your family's doing all right that all the other families are doing well also. So I really challenge my friends and, and for people that have kids to, to bring home those, the friends of your kids and make sure they're doing well as well. Oh. Howard, I often speak about barriers that, that, that can keep a child from being a productive adult and uh, poverty, a, a lack mm -hmm. of education, and even a, a barrier as simple as language. It, it would seem to me that if a person is going to live in the state of Oklahoma, they need to learn to speak English, and it can be hard on a kid in an English-speaking school if Spanish is being spoken in the home or another language. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your take on that? What barriers are out there that you see? Probably the number one barrier for the kids who are really in the deepest need is the absence of both parents. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we can, this continues to be a problem nationally. 44% of all the births in the nation to mothers under 30 are now out of wedlock. <laughs> and so uh, the absence of both parents. So one of the issues we really tried to push is getting the resources that moms and dads need to have a committed relationship with each other. We had a lot of fatherhood programs, we had a lot of pro, it, pro, emphasis on mothers, getting mothers all this prenatal care they need. But ultimately, a child on average is going to do better if they get the benefit of both their parents in a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. And so giving the moms and dads the communication skills that they need, it's huge for a child in terms of their ability to learn language because they'll have two parents involved in their lives as opposed to just whatever time that one parent can give to them. doesn't mean that kids who come out of single parent households can't do well. It just means that on average, kids who get benefit of both their parents do better. And so whatever we can do to continue to, to strengthen those two, both parents being involved in the life of that child, those are really the keys, I think, to keeping kids out of the deep end of uh, the need factors. Well, following up on that, for those who don't have the benefit of both parents, right. what can we do? And as a child advocate, I talk to communities a lot about providing you know, supports for young families if they are a single parent family to make sure they have access to quality mm -hmm. child care. Mm -hmm. It's also in Howard's Bailiwick mm -hmm. uh, because we know that the education of the mom mm -hmm. and the, the level of literacy in the household is very telling mm -hmm. for when the children get to, to grade school. Yes. Because if you have a mom or, or the parent, whichever parent is at home who doesn't have a big vocabulary and doesn't interact with the child very much, uh, they, they hit the kindergarten door with maybe 500 words in mm -hmm. their vocabulary. Whereas a child who is read too often mm -hmm. and has good interaction with an adult comes with three times that many mm -hmm. words. So that you can see it's very mm -hmm. difficult to give a, a level playing field. Mm -hmm. Just last a few week, seconds left, however, wrap week, it up for us. Uh, on that same point, uh, John Rex, who's a mutual mm -hmm. friend of ours for his recent passing, was a big advocate of a program called Ready which was a, really a program that taught parents how to teach their children uh, at home how to read and ha reading to their child every day. 
don't miss a day. Every day, 20, mm -hmm. 20 minutes a day, reading to your child will make a huge difference in their vocabulary. Uh, math skills, that, getting the parents the skills they need to be effective yeah. with their children is really a, an important thing to be ready for. Howard Hendricks, Ann Arbus, thank you both for what you're doing, not only for children, but families in Oklahoma. You thank you. I'll be back with a final word right after this. Good life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. Hi, honey. You've got to check this out. What? What are we listening to? I had digital phone service installed today. It sounds just like before. I know, but it's going to save us a ton of money. With Cox Digital Telephone, you'll save big every month. Keep your same phone number and get your favorite calling features. Just pay less. That does sound good. You should hear the upstairs phone. There's a whole new world online, but it's not always safe for kids. Never agree to meet anyone you only know online, because they might not be who they say they are. And if you must meet them, take a parent along. It's the safe way for kids. Right, gang? Right. Be safe online. Thanks to Lauren Nelson and Cox, we're working to keep Oklahoma kids safer online. For your free guide, log on now. And if you feel your child has been placed in danger by someone online, notify law enforcement today. Mick Cornett back to wrap up this edition of The Verdict. Kent Myers will be back with us next week. In the meantime, check out our website, theverdict.tv. Tell us about a show you'd like to see. I'll see you next week. The preceding program was produced by the Production Services Group at Cox Communications, exclusively for the Cox Channel.